Praise the Lord. You are tuning into the media ministry of Apostle Barbara R. Thomas. This ministry is designed to bring forth revelation and encouragement and to enlighten your minds. Now listen as the woman of God brings you revelation from the word of God. Give God some praise in this house because he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, we thank you. Come on and give me praise right there. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. Anybody understand that the Lord is good? Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, my God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on and magnify him. Oh. And you know that the Lord is good. And God is doing great things on behalf of his people in this hour. And he is bringing to pass his word in this season. The spirit of the Lord is doing such a tremendous work in the earth right now. And many people are missing what the Lord is doing because they have not fashioned themselves. And set themselves to understand that we are in a definite new season upon the earth in this hour. This is the hour where God is getting ready to show himself in a more stronger way. Yes. Deliverance is about to hit people yes. when they least expect it. Yes. The Spirit of the Lord begin to tell me that he's getting ready to visit people right in the midst of their sins. Come on. Hallelujah. I heard the Lord say on today that he's getting ready to go into the crack houses. Hey, glory. Ha. You know what he told me, brother God? He said, I got to go where the saints want. Yeah. Jesus. So he's going to send his spirit there. Yeah. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Because we're too busy being fashionable inside the house. Yeah. Inside the four walls of the church. We're being fashionable. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. We, and we're, we're preaching to each other. Uh, when the Lord is saying it's time to go get some souls look at somebody and tell them it's time to go get them hallelujah it's time to go get them hallelujah so the Lord began to deal with me and he began to talk to me about this hallelujah because he said it's the hour now when the people gotta get up hallelujah and stop sitting down I kept hearing that scripture wake down that sleepers oh my God Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell the church got to wake up. Oh my God. Hallelujah. The church got to wake up now. Because they been sleep too long. Sitting inside the four walls of the church. Talking and gossiping. Fighting and devouring each other. Coming against each other. church. Yes. The Spirit of the Lord began to deal with me as I was on my way and I, and I saw the theme that says awakening revival. And then I'm on my 
And the Spirit of the Lord is trying to send a stir right now yes. among the body of believers. Come on now. Because we have became stagnated and stuck in the four walls of the church. Yes. Hallelujah. But the Lord has left us with a great commission. Yes. He's left us with some instructions that we have to follow in this hour. And we got to understand that we can't have no fear in this season. Because he's getting ready to do a great thing in the earth. Look at somebody and tell them we're going outside the walls now. Hallelujah. The Lord began to tell me, he said, the church building has put a barrier between me and the sinners. He said, because we're more apt to move around in the church, but we're not willing to go outside the doors and to seek and save those that are lost. We're too busy sitting among each other trying to see who can out preach each other. We're trying to see who got the most anointed on the line. We're just sitting in the midst of the church trying to see who got the best gifts operating. We don't know that God is calling us beyond the church house. It was never God's intention for us to just sit among each other. Oh my God. But he gave us a commission. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them he gave us an instruction. Hallelujah. Because we need to understand. That the Lord wants us to go outside the walls of the church. Mm -hmm. We're stuck, people of God. Yes. We're stuck because we don't really want to get no sweat. Wow. <laughs> We're not willing to really work in yes. this hour. Yes. We don't have people, and, and we especially don't have preachers that are willing to roll up their sleeves right, right. and come out of their three-piece suits. <laughs> Oh my God. And are willing to come out of their stilettos while they say nothing. Hallelujah. And take them collars off. Oh my God. And get out there among the people. My God. Hallelujah. We're too busy sitting and we're, we're so stuffed till we don't even have nowhere to release what we got. Oh my God. And this is the reason why the church, hallelujah, is, is, is fighting among each other. Because we don't really have empty vessels that we can pour into. We're trying to stop people that don't already overate. Oh God. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're trying to give people something to eat and they already full. And so the Lord is saying, in this hour, the people got to come out of the four walls of the church and begin to go. Look at somebody and tell them, it's time for you to go. Four 
wall. So he begins to speak a word in Matthew. The 28th chapter. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Because now he's he's getting ready to give us our orders. He's getting ready to tell us this is the reason why I died. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is what it's about. Hallelujah. It's about you winning souls to the kingdom of God. It's about you going out. Hallelujah. And telling someone that don't know that Jesus is Lord. That they're not they're, 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 That there's a remedy for their addiction. Oh my God. There's a remedy for their age. Y'all ain't saying about that. It's a remedy for their alcoholism. It's a remedy for their murderous spirit. It's a remedy for the rapist. It's a remedy for the pedophile. It's a remedy. Hallelujah. For each and every person that are being bound by the enemy. You got to understand that the gospel was not to just be preached to those that are already saved. Oh God. The gospel is about preaching the people that need salvation. The church is nothing but a training ground to get you prepared so you can go out and preach the word. Oh my God. Hallelujah. But we have become stuck in the four walls of the church, sitting among each other, agitated because there is no life coming in the body of Christ. Oh God. We're not preaching, we're not preaching, we're not preaching to get people delivered and set free. We're preaching to see how much tithes and offering we can get. And all they say that we're preaching for crowds and members, but we're not preaching for disciples to be made. Oh my God. Hallelujah. We have forgotten what we're supposed to be doing. Hallelujah. Once we give our life to Christ and we get filled with the Holy Ghost, then he talks about it in the book of Acts. Hallelujah. One and eight. He said, you shall receive power. Come on now. After that, the Holy Ghost come upon you and then you will be witnesses. Come on now. He said, what I'm doing, hallelujah, what I've given you is the, so you will have the ability to go out and tell somebody that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he rose from the dead. Come on now. Hallelujah. He rose from the grave. Hallelujah. And is sitting at the right hand of his father, making intercessions on our behalf so that we can be saved, that we can be delivered, that we can be set free, that we can come out of sin, that we can get a breakthrough, that we won't no longer be in bondage. Why are we just sitting around preaching to people that already know the good news? Yes. Right. God is calling us out now. Hallelujah. It's time for the church to awaken. He said, awake now that sleep is. <laughs> My God. Hallelujah. The church is asleep. <laughs> it has become a sleeping giant. <laughs> hallelujah. And in this saying hour, hallelujah, the Lord said it's time for you to wake up because the alarm clock is going off now. Hallelujah. We got to wake up now. The alarm clock is going off. Hallelujah. We got loved ones in our own family that we don't even witness to. Yes. Yeah. We got people in our neighborhood that don't even know we say. No, no. Oh God. We got folks on our job that don't even know we know Christ. No. Come on. Hallelujah. Because we're not going telling the good news. Come on. If they can get on the job and talk about that party, and surely I can talk about what I party with this weekend. Come on now. Hallelujah. We got to stop letting the devil push us in the corner and make us scared to talk about the word. Come on now. It's time out now. We don't have enough. Hallelujah. If they can cuss and slow all that stuff, hallelujah, then why we can't call on the name of Jesus? Why we not able to say the name of Jesus in a workplace? But you can cuss, you can do everything you want to do. You can have sex on the job, everything. But you can't talk about Jesus. It's something wrong with the world. And the world ain't going to get right into the church, get on this job. The world ain't going to see a turn around until the church turn around. The world ain't going to see a break. Until the breakthrough come through the body of Christ. It's time now. We got to get up out of our pew. We got to come out of these pool pits. Come on now. Hallelujah. We got to stop fighting. Oh my God. Over a pool pit. And let's go out there and fight the devil over these souls. Come on. Come on. That's right. Too busy holding up the progress of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And then we want to run around and say we apostolic. And we operating in the book of Acts. Somebody don't tell a whole lot. A whole lot. 
Come on now. Because we're not seeing no progress in salvation coming forth. We're not seeing souls being won. They preach so until the end. I got 3,000 was added. Right. In one sermon. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm not talking about somebody just telling you to come up to the altar and, and you just look it. I'm talking about people that have a life changing experience when they don't go back to sin. A life changing experience when they understand. I ain't got to pick up the crack pipe no more. I ain't got to hold on to no more. I ain't got to fornicate no more. I ain't got to commit adultery. I ain't got to be on the homosexual. I ain't got to be a lesbian. We got to have a life changing experience. Still living the same last 
you uh, sitting in church uh, talking about you waiting on souls. Uh, that's not what he said. Uh, he said, go. Come out of the walls. Uh, go. Uh, I didn't anoint you uh, to sit down. Uh, I didn't anoint you uh, to stay inside the walls. Uh, go ye. Uh, look at somebody. to want to change. Yes. But we preach the gospel. Mm. So he says in Isaiah 61, I'm going to get back to my other verse. He said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Yes, right. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Yes. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Yes. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Yes. And the open of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Yes. And the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that more. It's something wrong. Mm. When we're not seeing any breakthroughs. Yeah. My God. In the lives of the people. Right. How can we come and tell the people. And preach the gospel. And no one is stirred to change. Right. As I begin to really research into Acts. Everywhere I look that they preach Jesus, people got saved and delivered and filled with the Holy Ghost. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Ooh, that's right. They got the full measure. We have a revival and ain't nobody getting nothing. That's right. But their pockets empty. We got the full one. Oh my God. Oh, oh. God. Hallelujah. All they getting is their pockets empty. Hallelujah. But they're not getting anything that'll bring them out of bondage. Hallelujah. He said, you got to, first of all, he, he's anointing you to preach. Uh, that's the first thing he's doing. He's anointing you to preach. And in and, and, and this day and hour, people say they preach it, but they ain't stay saying nothing. Right, yeah. right. You got a whole lot of people making a whole bunch of noise. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they and they saying little cute stuff, but ain't no revelation to their word that would cause the people that want to come out of their sin. There's no convicting messages. And and they're not Messiah because people are afraid that if they talk about Jesus and that you got to make a choice and that if you don't, you're going to hell. Come on now. now they don't want to talk about that. They don't want to talk about eternal damnation. They don't talk. They don't want to talk about eternal separation from God. They don't want to deal with that. They don't want to let the people know that there is a place reserved for those that have not accepted Christ as their Savior. That's walking contrary to the Word and the ways of God. That's why He said you gotta find the high 
way of holiness. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He said, you got to seek for it. Come on now. Hallelujah. And then the Messiah. Hallelujah. And the problem with us is we don't know how to seek for what is right. We preach it everything, but the word that's able to bring somebody out of sin. We preach it everything, but the word that's able to give somebody hope uh, that they can come out of what they're bound in. Uh, we got people sitting in the midst of us suicidal uh, coming to the church because we don't tell them, uh, if you come over here, Jesus can help you. Uh, and then when we get them in there, we preach everything but Jesus. Uh, we give them no hope for their addiction, no hope for their suicidal thoughts, uh, no hope for their heart that has been wounded, no hope for what they're going through, but we're preaching about you can have a house, you can have a car, you can get your honey money, but they ain't teaching you that Jesus is Lord, hallelujah Lord, they ain't teaching you that he rules with all power in his hand, is anybody understanding he rules? Don't look at that beast, man. You don't exploit the people while they're down. Right. 
Come on. Hallelujah. And this is what we have to learn. We want to show it. Like, I'm out here. I'm out here with it. I'm out here showing that. I'm out here doing this. You don't have to do that. Your works will speak for you. Huh? Hallelujah. Whatever you do, huh, God got a reward for it. Hallelujah. There's a crown laid up for you. For the souls that you win. Come on now. Hallelujah. You don't have to work. You don't need the recognition of man. So they're out there, they're saying, they're exploiting us, our downsides. They're exploiting us in our places of hurts, in our desolate place. They only come out here when they have cameras. But they won't just come out here and just love us. It costs us to get a meal. We got to come to their church. But they don't tell us to come to Jesus. Yes. Uh oh. Oh my God. We'll feed you. Yes. As long as you become a member. Yes. Oh God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. So then, instead of us binding up the brokenhearted, yes. we're crushing them even the more. Yes. Yes. Oh God. And so they said now they don't even want the preachers to come out. Because they are taking advantage of them. My father. See, who wants to be known all over the world? It's homeless. Yeah. We're dirty and we're we're filthy and stuff, and they're putting us all on camera all over the world, Jeez. showing us in our worst state. Oh <sighs> and then they say, once the cameras go off, they forget us. Yes, they do. They only come out when they need to do a building fund drive. That's what they told me. <laughs> and what they told me, wow. uh, they said when they need to get some money together, then they come out so people are sold to them. Mm. <sighs> mm. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Understand this, people of God. Preaching the gospel, presenting the gospel, means that you go out and help the total man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're good tonight. Not just preach to them. They need a place to stay. This is where the church needs to start getting property. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We need apartment buildings, apartment houses. The total man. Mm -hmm. the total man. Huh? We need food banks, clothing banks. Come on. Every church should have one. Mm -hmm. Every ministry should have the ability to help somebody. We want to talk about the people when they come in and get saved. Oh, their clothes ain't right. But where's your clothes closet at? That's right. That's right. Where's the clothes closet that the church should have to help the people? Where's the food bank the when they ain't ate a meal in days? That's right. That's right. And offer them something besides a hot dog. <laughs> While you go home to a steak. Yeah. Come on. That's an excellent point. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give them some hot dogs. The most cheap is most messed up and can mess up your stomach is a hot dog. That's true. We don't know what they're grinding up in this. But no, we don't. And then they get yeah, on the lonely sandwiches. <laughs> Cold sandwiches. Put a grill out there. Yeah. Huh? Take some of that money y'all gonna use and take take yourself on vacation. Yeah. Mm. And buy some real meat. Yeah. Oh, oh y'all ain't saying nothing. Huh? Put some sides to it. Mm -hmm. You eat steak, but you want to give them a hot dog. Mm -hmm. They already feel bad. God began to tell me, he said, why don't the church one time just have a, a gourmet dinner and invite all the homeless people and serve them like they valuable. Right. He said, we don't even look at the fact that they're down on their luck sometimes because of circumstances that have came. In life, yes, yes. everybody don't want to be out there. Yes. Right. Oh, y'all don't want to say nothing. Yes. Everybody is not out there because they lazy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> People are out there because they went through something. Yes. Come on now. The Lord began to show me. He said, "There are people sitting among you that are suicidal, oh and we can't even preach to them that Jesus is peace." He's the Prince of Peace, but we ain't giving him to them. 
Hallelujah. Because we're too busy trying to make sure that we get the, the offering out the way. Oh, no, they saying that. We're cut short. We won't even have an altar call because we won't want nobody to walk out and not leave an offering. Yeah. And we'll cut the we'll cut it short. Yeah. Rather than have an altar call. Oh, Jesus. Somebody said something the other day. I said, you know what? That's the most ignorant statement I ever heard. Mm. Oh, we don't need the altar no more. The devil is alive. I said, oh, when that happened? Mm. They taking the mind. And, the, and you see in churches, they don't have altars. My God. They don't have them. Oh, my God. Mm. I got my breakthrough on the altar. That's right. Come on. I got my breakthrough on the altar before the Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. Because there was a, a place that they came and prayed. So the prayers of the righteous was on the altar. Y'all yeah. ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, come on. Hallelujah. They don't want to peep. They don't want to have altar calls no more. They don't even, you know what? They're not even showing people that the Lord still delivers. They don't want, they don't want none of that to be known. We want these perfect little churches where everybody's in there, sitting in there, and they just so perfect. God. But when the real anointing falls, oh, yes. uh, this is when we're going to find out what's really in the house. Right. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. The Lord began to tell me, he said, in this day and hour, he said, you got to preach to where the people are at. We're preaching messages sometimes and ain't nobody in the house going through what we preach. Come on now. Because we're preaching to try to stir up the people for other obvious reasons. But we're not preaching so their soul can be stirred up. Hallelujah. We need to preach so to the fire fall like it did on the day of Pentecost. Come on now. Hallelujah. When the Spirit of the Lord came in like a mighty rushing wind. Come on now. Hallelujah. And the people were filled with the Holy Ghost. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. We need some refillings now in the body of Christ. This is why we're calling for revival now. We're not calling a revival because we're looking for people to come just so we can pay our church rent. Come on now. Oh, my the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me today. He said, I'm grieved at the hearts of the people in this hour. He said, they are greedy people. Yeah. He said, they're self-satisfying people. And they're not looking for what is most important to me. And I said, God, what can we do? He said, it's time for real revival. He said, it's time out now. It's time for the people to get on the street. How about this Sunday? Everybody shut the doors of their church. And everybody inside go out and let's witness in the city. Yeah. Everybody take a block. Teams get together and take a section. Oh my God, oh my God. And let's go out and win the souls to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Let's go out and get the people that's not coming to church because they heard so much about it so they don't even want to come because they heard so many bad things about it they don't even want to show up in the house of God. Tell the sinners, they'll, they'll come on the tent. They'll even come to a hotel. Yes. But they don't want to follow you to church. That's so true. true. And their words are, it's a bunch of hypocrites. Yes, that's true. In there. That's what they're doing. One, one man told me, so don't tell me about that preacher. He was just in the club. Come on. Sinners, knowing that you are not who you say you are. Mm. And we can't win the loss. <laughs> because those that are supposed to be found has lost themselves. Oh, my God. oh God. So God is calling us and he's saying now it's time to go back to preaching Christ. Mm -hmm. Oh God. Hallelujah. See we strayed away man of God. We strayed away from it because we began to get greedy. Mm -hmm. And the Lord began to tell me he said that spirit of greed has gripped the house soul till now. We can't even have revival except they try to figure out how much money you can get. Wow. And then we won't call people that's going to preach the gospel. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, right. We only call people that draw crowds right. and yeah. money. And right. money. Right. That's right. That's right. We're not trying to get nobody that can draw souls in. Yes. Right, right. That's what's mm. happening. My God. 
We're not trying to get nobody that's able to, to, to give a word that's effective enough that people will come. Listen, the, the anointing is supposed to be so when a revival is called to in urchins out in the street. And even when people drive by, they are drawn to come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's that kind of revival yeah, yeah. that they had? Oh my God, hallelujah. Smith Wiggleworth and all them. Y'all yeah. ain't saying nothing. Maria Woodworth and all them. Come on now, hallelujah. When they, when they were in the building, when they were under tents, and most of the time they were under tents, they weren't inside the building. They was outside preaching the word of God. Right. Where are the people that's ready to be tent dwellers again? Come on. Uh, we're the preacher. See, you can't hardly get preachers to preach out of the tent because most of them can't deal with the, the demonic forces in the, on the outside. Hallelujah. They want to stay inside where it's safe. Oh, my God. But see, what you don't understand, hallelujah, the worst demons is inside the house. <laughs> hallelujah. Because they undercover. Y'all ain't saying nothing. They come in. Oh, my God. They come in all kind of robes and everything. Y'all ain't saying nothing. They wear the big white things on their head. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. They got long skirts on. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. When I know what I'm dealing with when I go outside because I understand the street. When you come from the world, you understand the world. Come on now. Why is it we can't go back to where we came from unless we still struggling with the same thing they struggling with? It should not be no reason that we can't go out and witness. What happened to the witnessing teams that used to go out every Saturday and witness all what happened to that? What happened to the ability? Hallelujah. The have revival. What happened to have a revival until the Lord say stop? Until the Lord say stop. Sometimes new men and women of God were in places for months because the revival was going on. Some of the places they went to, they operated just like they did in the book of Acts. Everybody in the city was saying, y'all ain't saying that. Everybody was healed. Come on. When you got to work and just hit your underarms and the other vital parts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And went on to work. Y'all looking at me crazy. Right. Hallelujah. Right. But then we want to get over here and we can't hardly sit in the church. Come on now. Hallelujah. We can't even sit in church for an hour without us getting agitated and ready to go. Oh, they preaching too long. But you sat there and listened to, 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 to the, the blues singers until Jesus told you to get up and go home. Hallelujah. I, I, I had one friend. She was in love with B.B. King. You know, I don't want to drag you to hear me. I told her, I ain't sad. I don't want to hear all that shit. <laughs> so, uh, the press and move the music. Hallelujah. I want something where I can shake it to the left and the right. You know what I'm saying. Now, you know, <laughs> oh, Jesus. I want to be able to move. Come on now. I'll sit up there while you nursing a drink and crying all night long. Uh, no, baby. I want to go hit no B.B. King. But she was sitting there all night. And me crazy, I was sitting there with her. <laughs> sit there with her because if they was your friend, you stayed right with her. 
Hallelujah. Stay right there. Stay right there. Make sure they was all right because they was depressed. Y'all must know what I'm saying. And, and BB didn't help them no better. No, he didn't. Sitting up there talking about the thrill is gone. Ah. I, I told him the thrill been gone. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Shoot. I'm tired of this. But we'll sit. We sat all night long. Yeah. Party all night long. And then we get over here, and we won't even take time out to win a soul to Christ. My God. We won't let the Lord do his work in the body. Yeah. We won't let the spirit of the Lord move like it needs to move. Because yeah. we're ready to go home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you should have our children. I just had my kids at church until the church was over with. Yeah. Get up, go to school, and ace every test they had. Because they were sitting in the anointing. That's right. Uh, that is the truth. They were sitting in the anointing can go to school and ace every test they had to take. Come on. Because they were sitting in the anointing. Y'all don't slow yeah. down. Yeah. We, we, we weren't worried about nothing. Come on now. Hallelujah. When the kids got home, made sure they got their homework together. Because you going to church. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we went to church. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Listen, the church I came out of, we had something going on seven days a week. Come on now, we didn't have time to try to slip and sling it. You know, we did, but we... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. But it was hard for you to do it. Hallelujah. And I remember when the saints would take care of each other. If you miss a day, baby, that, if you went at church on Sunday, if you went at Bible study, they was at your house that night. They didn't wait till the next day. They knocking on your door. Hey, where you at? Why you didn't come to church? Come on now. I busted a whole lot of people in, in ministry. Hallelujah. Because they didn't think I would come by. Oh, 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 oh. I love to do the midnight raids. Oh. <laughs> when they least respect pastors to show up, you knock on the door about midnight, have somebody watching the back door and the sides, you know, in case they want to climb out the window. Oh, yeah, you coming up in here? We about to pray you through. Uh huh. Yeah, you, it won't be no more fornicate going on. Huh? No. <laughs> they wouldn't even come back because they knew we might show up. We busted up a whole lot of relationships. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lift your hands and say, God, help me to go. Hallelujah. That's why he said, that's why Jesus is saying right here in that 28th chapter. Hallelujah. He said, in all power, oh my God, is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Did you understand what he said? He said, teach all nations. Come on now. He's telling us right there. The commission is for you to go everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, hallelujah. Oh my God. Hallelujah. The commission is for you to connect with people of all kind of different multiracial, multicultural. Come on now. Hallelujah. He's saying now it's time for you to go. Hallelujah. There's some people that need to hear about the Lord. There's some people that ain't never heard the gospel. He said when the gospel is preached to all nations, then the end gonna come down and say that. Hallelujah. And it ain't some people they haven't heard the good news yet uh, why because the people ain't going unless there's a big crowd they're going to receive That's right. Come on. they God. have little little countries that people won't even go to mm -hmm. thank God for the internet or they probably would never, never hear about the Lord yeah. mm -hmm. but God didn't say for you to go through the, through the internet uh -huh. He wanted you to physically get yourself up. Because ain't nothing like a personal touch. That's right. That's right. Ain't nothing. Like, you got to connect with the people. Yes. Amen. If they didn't show me love when I came in, I would still be in. Y'all understand what I'm saying? They connected with me personally. Right. Yes. If I didn't get that personal connection, I don't know if I would have kept on or even survived. Mm -hmm. Especially when you've been in brokenness. Yeah. Yes. And you're trying to come out, y'all ain't saying. Yes. Come on. Yes. When you've been hurt by the world. Oh, yes. Jesus. Hallelujah. And you're looking for something. And, and this is why we got to walk in love, people of God. Yes. You can't go and get the sinners if you don't have love in you. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Because when you see when you gotta know how to walk and when you in love, when you're walking in love, ain't nobody smell bad enough that you can't hug them. That's right. 
My oh my God, oh my God, that messed some of them right there. Because you don't want nobody to touch you because you're too clean. Right. Oh Come my on. God. <laughs> my God. That's why you can't take cute people with you. Amen. Because yes. they too cute to be touched. Y'all yes. ain't saying that. Yes. That's why you got to leave some people inside the walls. Yeah. Come on now. Everybody ain't going to quit to go outside. Let me just make that God. plain. That's but those that are on the inside are supposed to be able to teach those that come in from the outside. But instead of doing that, they need some teaching themselves. Come on, right. Hallelujah. Every church should have a witnessing program. Right. I agree. Yeah. How are you going to have a church? How are you going to have outreach without that? That's right. We don't want to get up on Saturday morning. We used to be up early. I'm talking about early. Come meet at the church. Pray. Mm. Have some training yeah. so they know how to do, what to do. So you're going to have a bunch of people just out there, you know, wild and crazy on the street, hollering and screaming, yeah. scaring the folks rather than pulling them in. Because you come up to me with about 10 of you speaking in tongues and screaming and hollering, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm subject to hit you if I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. You know what I'm so we have to have classes to teach them how to go out and witness. That's right. Uh -huh. That's right. And then we need to be praying for souls to come in. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Hallelujah. But we don't hardly want that. When we say outreach, we that means exploit. Mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Let's exploit this. Let's, let's just let everybody think that we are doing this great work. Mm. God told me, he said, when you go out and witness, don't make no announcement about it. Mm -hmm. For what? Mm -hmm. It ain't about you. Mm -hmm. It ain't about you being seen. Mm -hmm. It ain't about you being heard. It's about him. Oh God. Amen. So he said, go ye in all the world, teach all nations, baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And Lord, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. Hallelujah. And, and I know some of them religious folks right there just went crazy. Oh, she said, baptize in the name. <laughs> <laughs> they, just, they just went crazy right then. <laughs> and I told somebody the other day, I said, don't person. Oh my God. <laughs> Didn't I know those are titles? Hmm. Come on. <laughs> you gotta baptize in Jesus' name. Do you know Jesus is all of them too? Oh my God. Yes, yeah. yeah. Do you know that the Godhead yeah. worked in three different ways, but they all won? I said, y'all didn't even understand what he was saying in that passage of scripture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is the, just the fulfillment mm -hmm. of the promise to redeem us. Oh, he's the son of God. Yes. So if I say God, I'm still saying Jesus. Yeah. If, I, if I know that, that there one, one. <laughs> Jesus. And we argue. And then we can't get people to deliver because they're confused. That's right. Yeah. Mm. They're confused. Mm. Yeah. Jesus himself said, pointed the people back to the Father. Mm. Oh, oh I'm, I'm just, mm -hmm. let me just get out of there. Oh Hallelujah. Because that's a whole theological <laughs> session right there. <laughs> <laughs> got to be able to really expound on that and explain it and because you got all the people right now the Jesus name and all them like that that's going to be upset because you mentioned the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost and they get all upset and about to lose their mind and they fight more about that than the principles of the word mm -hmm. and, 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 and Jesus was all about souls but you fight over this. How you how you baptize? We understand the baptism. Yes. Come on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. We understand that. Who did who did John baptize him in? When he went down. He just put him in the water. 
Y'all don't let me strive. Y'all don't let me strive. See, this is what I'm saying. We, we, we argue. That's why the people scared to come into church. Because we confused. Y'all right, looking at me strive. Hallelujah. And that's not to diminish his name, but it's to let you know that we are fighting about the wrong things in the body of Christ. And we're losing the people because we don't understand. This is part of the word. This is the great commission. This is what he's talking about. Yes. We understand over in Acts after the church was done. Uh -huh. We understand that. But even if baptized in Jesus' name, it does not diminish the Godhead. That's right. He represents all of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. He represents all of them. Amen. Here, I'm trying to help people right now. Because we're arguing over the wrong thing. We're getting the people saved and then we come into dimensions of things that are not godly. You understand what I'm saying? So we have to make a distinction now and begin to uh, teach the people the word of God. Don't say something if you don't know how to break it down where they can understand it. Right. Yes. Because you got them looking strange. So they're trying to figure out, well, I thought they were all together. And, I, and you, you, you say, I can't say the Father. <laughs> Explain when you say stuff. And don't just throw it out there like that. Come on. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on. Yes. They preach Jesus and then they baptize. Mm -hmm. We don't really know because man wrote this. Mm -hmm. And some of this stuff was changed. Mm -hmm. Y'all looking at me mm -hmm. So we got to really find out stuff before we just start arguing and fussing and want to kill up everybody. Yes. Y'all looking at me strange. So I know I lost a few of them right there. And I believe in Jesus' name and everything else. I really do. Yeah. But now, come on, people of God. Come on now. You can't tell the people that they they, 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 they can't receive yeah. all of it. Yeah. Come on now. Right. Come, on. come on. And you telling them that, oh, you can't make it in because you, you didn't go down in Jesus' name. I make it in because I received Jesus. The baptism is just an outward show that I identify with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It does not save me. No. It's just part of the spirit. Y'all look at it be strange. And if that's the case, then y'all need to be making sure these people get filled with the Holy Ghost. Since you want to get all technical and everything. How in the world are we getting them saved, but we're not getting them filled no more? Right. We're not even teaching about being filled with the Holy Ghost. Right. And let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost is more than speaking in tongues. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. It's the attributes. He talked about in Galilee. Yeah, come right. on now. We, we need to understand. Thank it's you. the attributes. It's who he is. It's, it's being able. Come on now. Walk in love. Long suffering. All that. That's what it's about. That's the Holy Ghost. That's the evidence that you have the Holy Ghost. Thank you. That you're walking in the attributes yeah. of the Spirit of God. Yeah. Not the tongues. Yes. Yes. My God. My God. My God. My God. The tongue, if they really understand and read that in Acts, the tongues were able to cause them to hear That's in their right. own language. That's right. Yes. That's what the tongues were. Do you not understand? Your tongues are a language. That's yes. right. That's right. That God is going to use where He sends you. Yes. Uh oh. Yes. yes. And they were able to hear in their language what they were saying. Right. Yes. Right. They said, we hear our language. We hear our language. That's right. So that they can understand what was going on. So that they could be a witness. Come on now. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and say, God, help me not to be ignorant in this hour. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, we got to stop fighting over little stuff. Amen. God began to tell me, he said, they put more emphasis on the tongues than they do on the attributes of the Holy Ghost. He said, that's how I know that you have been filled with my spirit. Teaching people how to speak in tongues. So you know the tongues can't be the <laughs> That's your language God gives you. To be able to communicate. That's right. And it's for your assignment on earth. Yes. 
Because understand, they were able to hear their own language yes. as they were speaking, yes. as the Holy Ghost came. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. That's right. So tongues is a sign to the unbelievers. That's right. Yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. How do I get over there? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Ghost is there. Tongues are assigned to the unbelievers. Yes. And they hear. I've been among people of different nationalities, and we, God will begin to have me speak in tongues. And they'll come up and say, You were talking to me. You were talking to me. I didn't know I was talking to you, dear. My God. But the Holy Ghost knows. Yes. That's why I said, He'll teach you all things. Yes, come on. So if we're going to talk about the experience of salvation, we cannot.
Itself. Oh God, it's time for us to rise now. Look at somebody and tell them we got to get up out of these churches. All this anointing just sitting in the house of God. This is the reason why we can't stand each other. Because we're too full and nowhere to deposit it in. You got to go find you some empty vessels Woo! that need what you got. So that you can pour into them. Yes. So that they can receive salvation. Yes. Yes. Souls are dying, people of God. Yes. And we sitting in the church arguing about who got the biggest building. My God. We got these big buildings. But we ain't made room for souls. Oh God. I had an old song that used to sing said, to the utmost, Jesus say, Jesus say oh, yeah. what am I saying? That's that song that got me in that day. To the utmost, Jesus say, what am I saying? He will pick you up and he'll turn. Oh, my God. 
thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, begin to praise Him. Hallelujah. Some of you need to know the you have just finished listening to the media ministry of Apostle Barbara R. Thomas. You may write her at Apostle Barbara R. Thomas, P.O. Box 13291, Durham, North Carolina, 27709. Thank you for supporting the ministry.